Hello, Lyman. Hey, how's it going? Can you hear me? I can, yeah. Okay. Yep. I never know how these things are going to go, man. It's like half the time it doesn't connect right. But right. okay, glad we got it on the first shot. How you doing, man? Oh, I'm doing well. Thanks so much for being able to or being willing to do this. I really appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. Sometimes I'm I'm hard to reach. We've had a lot going on over here recently with massive exterior remodels and everything else. I got the blisters to prove it. Look yeah. at these things. Dude. I can see those. Wow. Yeah. I, I, I touched hot tar. I was freaking stupid. Yeah, that that'll get you. Those yeah, burns, it, those it, are, it. burns are the worst. Those are horrible. Dude, uh, I, I, I got me thinking about how bad it would have been to be tarred and feathered. Oh my, yeah. Full that body. Been... Oh my gosh. I, you know, I got to assume it would kill you. Yeah, I would think so. Yeah, yeah, um, brutal. Yeah. Well, let me introduce myself. I'm a high school shop teacher, but I'm also a volunteer firefighter and an EMT. So I Very cool. wear many hats, and uh, as the as a member of the fire department and EMT, I was in a class this summer. It was a uh, it was done by Alert. It's an organization out of um, Texas, and they put on a class where it was an integrated response with um, law enforcement, fire, and EMS. And so, mm -hmm. it was, you know, it, with our um, part of it we're just supposed to wait for law enforcement and then go into a school. It was supposed to be about active shooters and that type of situation. So we were, right. we were supposed to just wait for the police to be our security, and then we would go in and treat the wounded in that sure. regard. And so that got me yeah. thinking, man, it'd be nice to have a little bit more um, defensive capabilities than just run fast in that situation. Well, you know, not just that, but... Okay, so I was a volunteer firefighter for a while up here in Summers, Montana. Um, but even before that, I got to thinking that, you know, some measure of personal protection above and beyond just fire protection seems like a real good idea for guys storming into buildings that are, you know, on fire and collapsing around them, right? right. Um, <clears throat> like a 3A plate on your chest might save you from debris that comes your way. Shoulder plates might protect you from the same sort of thing. Um, I started playing around with integrated, you know, oxygen systems that might mount to or otherwise integrate with a plate of that curvature such that the tank were designed around, you know, this whole inclusive, you know, system. Um, I just think the market wasn't quite there for me to really go after it as hard as I, I needed to. And, and to a certain extent, I think some of the things I want to do in the future kind of complement that. So, you know, when and if I ever get to that point, then, you know, I can start to turn my attention a little bit more towards the needs of firefighters. But certainly there's some need there, especially when you got idiots shooting at you, for God's sake. Right. Yeah. We are. Uh, I live in a very small town, and so we don't have a lot of the stupidity that goes on in the big cities. And so we really haven't mm -hmm. had a need for armor yet. And so it's yeah. not been a pressing issue, but I'm, I'd rather get a, in front of the curve than behind it. Of course. Yeah. Yeah. So a small town where? In Southeast Iowa. Okay. Yeah. Yep. If you draw a straight line between Burlington and then Iowa city on the map, we're about right in the middle. A lot of corn raised out there, I think, yeah. A lot of corn, yep. Corn and soybeans, <laughs> yeah. 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 And so cool. along the teacher side, I have uh, some questions I've thought up that I would think teachers would ask me. I'm mm -hmm. I'm all on board on having a, a set of uh, plates or armor in the classroom in case there's an active shooter. Then, you know, just throw them on and then move with your kids and you can be first out yeah. the door and – and that type of deal, but I'm sure there's going to better be... than that. Probably a shield, honestly. Right. You know, when it comes to a home defense, um, you know, in my opinion, a shield is a little more useful, right? Because it, it, seconds count and you got to put a plate carrier on, you're burning up seconds, whether right. it's 10 seconds or 15, whatever the number is a shield. I just pick it up right it's sure. just that simple yeah. you know and you can have your pistol coming right around the side of the thing so um, you know for schools that in my opinion that might be a better solution and one that wouldn't cause your 
wimpy little superintendent to freak out at the idea of a teacher wearing, you know, something that looks like military gear, right? Sure. Yeah. And, and I'm guessing, but you know, about the wimpy superintendent part, but I, I'm playing the odds, right? So. Yeah, we have a pretty good superintendent. He's he's on board with uh, safety and security, so um, I wouldn't well, I wouldn't categorize him as wimpy, but. Yeah, a lot of them, a lot of them balk If you're at the recording idea. this and you're going to put it out, you, you better say that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 Is that, uh, before we go any further, is that okay if I put it out there on YouTube? Oh, you bet, man. Yeah, absolutely. Anything you want. No worries. Okay. Thank you. Happy to answer any questions or whatever you need. Sure. So um, along those lines of teachers, um, and the time you you said my one of my questions was would a teacher be able to have the time are they a long process to put on the vest um, I have a, a set of, of plates myself and I have a vest and I know how long it takes to put on but um, a lot of other teachers have no idea of what goes into this so what what would the time frame be and like you're mentioning a shield would that be a better option I think a shield is better in terms, you know, in this application, right? Um, because you can just pick it up and go. You know, how long is it going to take you to put on your plate carrier if you've done it, you know, a few times? Not long, but seconds count. Um, a shield is also a larger ballistic solution uh, that can provide cover to a larger group of people, whereas a plate is just a plate. And so much of you is exposed with a shield. You can really get behind the thing, right? I think the full viewing area of, of my camera here, right? And I'm holding it. I mean, easily that big, right? If not bigger. Sure. You know, probably something on scale about like that. Um, so, you know, you can, you know, like with a 20 inch by 30 inch shield, you can cover a lot of people, especially kids. You know, um, you could turn that thing horizontal as they're running across the high, uh, you know, the hallway or whatever you might be. God forbid, right? You know, and uh, yep. don't even get me started on that one, right? You know, yeah. Uvalde and this whole deal, but it's a thing. So be ready, certainly. And, yeah. and my advice would be 100% a teacher should have that in the classroom, 100%. Um, the other things you could do to take it a step further would be, you know, a ballistic solution for your door or for your walls, right? I mean, if you had these kids behind a door that some idiot's not going to be able to shoot the lock and kick it down or otherwise bang his way through, you got ballistic panels on the walls, you might as well just go on teaching because he ain't getting in. It's that simple. Yeah. So, you know, and these are some of the things that I'm trying to move into now as well, right? Like what I really want to get into doing is building fortress homes, oh, concrete okay. walls, ballistic doors and windows, heavy duty steel storm shutters, that sort of thing. Um, I guess just cause I can, right. Uh, my work history has been, well, when I was young, it was buying and selling real estate while I was getting my mechanical engineering degree. And then from there it was new product design and development and body armor. I can just take all that and compress it into one thing by doing what I'm talking about here. But at the same time, retrofitting existing structures, like in the way that I described with doors, with windows, with walls, don't need to tear it down. Don't need to build something new. We can retrofit whatever there is. Sure. Now with your shield and your plates, those are both products that you are selling right now. Well, I technically don't sell shields okay. on the site. Uh, what I do sell is a backpack panel. Okay. Right. And, and that's because I used to own part of a shield manufacturing company. And I sold my interest and signed a non compete. Sure. Um, but what I do have are backpack panels that I sold before that, that I've continued to sell after that. That's kind of within the scope of what I agreed to. Um, you know, if somebody like you came to me and, and said you wanted a shield, I'd make you some. You know, okay. and tell the guy to go ahead and sue me. I'm saving kids in the meantime. I sure. really, you know, I don't think that's what the, the non-compete was ever designed to prohibit me from doing. It's more to prohibit me from going after the big contracts, which I don't want anyway. You know, I sell to the people. Yeah. What is it? What would that weigh then? 
Well, it depends. You know, a 10 by 16 inch panel, right? You know, how big that might be. Um, uh, what is it? Roughly three pounds, three and a half, four pounds. Kind of depends on the ballistic solution we use because there are different uh, polymers, polymer armors that we can use. Some weigh as little as, you know, 1.8 pounds per square foot. Some will weigh, you know, 3.3. And the cost is sort of a function of the weight, really, more than anything. You know, you get some measure of increased performance at the same time. But primarily, it's weight savings. You know, the same number of plies typically are going to stop the same rounds. But you can do it with a thinner, lighter plate, et cetera, right? So that's where cost goes up. For something standard, uh, you know, I'd probably say, you know, big enough, cheap enough, uh, you know, call it 12 pounds 15 pounds you're not going to have a hard time doing anything with that right sure you could throw it like a frisbee if you want right so yeah okay it gets pretty light but then it depends on on your solution too right like uh i don't know how familiar you are with ballistic materials but with the polymer armors which are very light like what i just described 1.8 to 3.3 pounds per square foot um those are, are the lightest, obviously. They're buoyant. Um, they're the most expensive, but they're limited in what they'll stop, right? They're, that's typically not going to stop steel core rounds, like an M855. It will not stop that. It'll strip the jacket off the round, and the steel pin will come squirting out the other side. Typically, not very fast, but it makes it through. Um, that same plate or panel would, however, stop like a 762 by 39 mild steel core. So it would stop that pin. And, and, that, and that's the weird thing about ballistics, right? You know, they, they behave differently every time you make any sort of minor change to it. So it'll stop this. It won't stop that. You know, it's a little bit of a, you know, black bag, uh, magic going into the thing, I guess, you know, black arts they call it right you know the the secret solution to the whole thing so there's there's things that you learn about this over time just by being exposed to it but those are the limitations right typically you need a ceramic component to stop the steel core rounds right and that can be very thin in the form of an alumina oxide uh ceramic core breaker plate what they call it um but you know again it just depends on the, the solution and the need and and uh, a lot of factors go into that. Typically, I don't recommend a level three plus solution, which is essentially NIJ level three plus 762 by 39. Some people will call level three plus, well, whatever they want to call it. But on the manufacturing side, we have level three, we got level four, and in between that, we got three plus and three plus plus. Three plus is what I just described. Three plus plus is essentially. Uh, the ability to stop M855. And it does that through a ceramic component. So that would get a little heavier. Now you might be looking at 18 pounds. But you got a wider range of threats you can stop. Them. Sure, yeah. So for a firefighter, the, uh, the weight is not going to be that bad to overcome if you're talking about, you know, if you're you're saying 18 pounds in total, you're not talking 30 pounds. You know, the, the air packs are probably 30 pounds themselves. So it's not, yeah, sure. it's not that big of an increase in weight. No, and you guys are, you know, I mean, firefighters are usually strong and capable and, um, you know, 10, 20, even 30 pounds isn't going to do much to, you know, slow you down. It might slow you down a little. Sure, it's not going to stop you. Sure. Yeah. So just in talking about that, it answers a couple of my questions that I had about um, if it's, would it be too much for a firefighter or EMT, the extra weight, which I don't, I don't believe so if. If you're only talking no. 18 pounds, that's that's not that bad. It depends. You get on level, right? You know, um, we can make these things really light. You know, I mean, you can get 10 by 12 plates that are just a couple pounds, you know, and, and if you fall on water, it's going to float you like a life preserver, right? But mm. there's some things it won't do, like MA55. Right. So there's always this balance between, you know, weight, mobility, stopping power, cost and you have to filter that through the the little plinko machine to you know figure out which one suits you but um you know it's just a matter of filtering it out and, and knowing what you're talking about and, and what your needs are okay 
So what would you tell a teacher that said, oh, body armor, that's that's the scary military and police stuff. I don't want that in my classroom to scare my kids. Well, you know, I'm, I'm not sure you want me to say what I would actually tell them. So I'm going to say something else. <laughs> I'm OK you with you saying noticed- I'm okay with you saying however you feel. Uh, I'm a little rough around the edges, and I assume your students are going to watch this, so I'm going to try to put this as professionally as I can. But essentially, I would say, you know, don't allow your preconceptions of what this or that signifies or means or otherwise associates a person with. What are you trying to do? You're trying to save lives. Um, Are we going to label that as tactical, as military, or um you know paramilitary i think not uh sadly we live in a world where these things are a reality so we can either duck our head in the sand and pretend it doesn't exist or we can address the problem before it arises you know and i think a wise person is going to see the threat in advance address it in advance and be ready for it should it ever surface it's just that simple now if body armor is too threatening fine get a shield if it's a freaking square you know piece of plastic essentially with truck bed liner on it and a hand it doesn't look like much just sitting there and and given that it's probably uh, an ideal solution for your application um you know if i were you and i were met with resistance i i would simply push for a shield and multiple shields in fact right i mean you could You could appoint one kid, a bigger kid, a stronger kid as your backup to pick up the other shield. I mean, that's probably what I would do. I I don't know how, you know, the faculty would would see that comment, but, um, you know, to me, it just makes sense, right? If you you, want to live, respond accordingly. Right. You know, that's that's great thoughts there. Um, With the uh, shield or plates, what are we looking at in terms of price to stop an M855? Shields are more expensive. I mean, police departments are paying thousands of dollars for shields like that. Um, typically, the companies that are producing these things, and again, I know firsthand because I used to own one, you know, our cost to produce a particular shield, it was a 3A shield, but including the handle and the light, the whole thing, it was under $700. Oh, wow. We were selling them for twenty six fifty to the company that was actually the go-between for this large contract with the U.S. Marshals. I think the U.S. Marshals ended up paying over $3,500 per shield, okay. and that's a 3A shield. Sure. That only has the ability to stop up to 44 mag a pistol. Um, rifle-rated shields are, are considerably more. Um, I don't know why all these companies feel the need to mark it up so much, but you know, to give you an example, my cost might be, and you know, I'm sort of grabbing at straws here because I just pricing changes, and, sure, and yeah. the last price I got was for, uh, I think it was a 60 by 63 inch shield. My cost was maybe 3,500 bucks. Oh wow all polymer right so you know you break that down into 10 by 16s and sell them that way or you know whatever the case may be but when you add ceramic now you're adding not just another material component but another process because you have to press the polymer plates then you have to affix the ceramic core to it and you do that in um in an autoclave right so you know with vacuum bags around it sucking everything tight you know creating pressure that way uh for proper adhesion so not only is there additional material but there is additional process and you know a 20 by 30 shield the real market price for it's probably five thousand bucks um my cost for it i'm gonna grab at straws and say it's maybe 2500 bucks what would i sell it to a school for three thousand bucks right like i I don't need to make the the 100 percent markup you know i just need to make enough to make it worthwhile to move the money through sure um yeah so you know but that's me i take a different approach than a lot of these other companies you know like i say i mean i'm here i do what i do to serve the people whether they're kids or senior citizens or anything in between it's the american people that i'm focused on protecting as my calling and i don't deal with anyone but that Okay. What are the, is there a lifespan or a, 
um, expiration date on the plates? Is there a, a, a time where stuff starts um, becoming not so um, not as as highly rated as what it begins with? So, um, in the old days, that was a concern. Uh, heat could cause delamination. Um, not so much the case anymore. Right, the processing, the materials; these have all advanced. If you're dealing with somebody reputable, um, you know, you'll typically see a five-year manufacturer's warranty on something. Um, and a lot of people get confused thinking that that's the life cycle of the plate. It's not. Um, really, these things are good for decades. You know, I mean, if you just take your plates and, and put them in a carrier and hang them up in your closet, you can pull that thing out 30 years later and it'll do exactly what it did today. We've tested plates in the in the lab that were 10 plus years old and they performed exactly as they would have on day one. Now, if you leave it in, you know, an excessively hot trunk over and over and over, is that going to degrade it? And maybe over a course of years, but you're certainly not going to have any issues with, you know, periodic uh, storage, whether it be hot or cold, you can leave it out in the winter. No problem. Right? I mean, these things are tested through, you know, drop testing, environmental testing, then ballistic testing. So they're pretty rigorous, you, you, you know, the testing and, and, uh, and the plates are very robust. You know, we took one apart. I'll just give you an example. One of our cheapest plates, the cheapest plate I saw. And we ran it over with my Toyota Tundra. Nothing. So we split the ceramic and the polymer and we ran them both over, set them under the tires, ran it over. Neither one of them were damaged. We got frustrated. We started beating on the ceramic with a hammer. Nothing. Threw it off the roof. You know, I mean, we could have got it with a sledgehammer, but we're trying to be reasonable. Threw it off the roof. The thing took a chip out of the concrete. Oh, wow. Right. So um, just to give you an idea as to what's going into these things. And, you know, because of that, and, and because of how the materials have advanced over the years, these things really do have a very long life cycle. And you don't need to be concerned about that whatsoever. Again, provided you're buying something reputable. There's a lot of Chinese crap out there. People are going to tell you that they get it from China, but if it's cheap, it's Chinese. Whether it's a helmet or a plate or a plate carrier, you can bet that if it's significantly cheaper, then anything you see on my side or anyone like it, then I can promise you you're you're looking at something you don't want to buy. Sure. Yeah. Because Chinese materials work sometimes. Right. Yeah. It's just the truth of it. Yeah. So if someone came to you and said, what would you recommend for me? I'm a teacher and I want uh, an armor set up. I don't have the money for a shield right now, but I'd like a, a set of plates and a carrier. What would you recommend from your site that they... The, the, uh, so the SKU number is 19513. That is a level 3 plus plus. We actually have a limited number of those, so we did not run them through the actual NIJ certification. We ran them through the same ballistic testing and protocols. Uh, but we only had a limited number of cores, which are almost gone now. But um, that plate in particular, if we decide to take the step and order more ceramic cores, which we could, then we might go ahead and certify but it has proved to be one of our more popular plates and it's because of its weight and performance and cost ratios right um this thing's 10 by 12 it weighs just over five pounds as compared to maybe eight pounds on a level four plate it's going to stop every round that you would ever conceivably face in the united states the only round that it's not going to stop is going to be like a 30 odd six ap you know which is technically true level four right but uh, even me with my contacts for ammunition one of those rounds is going to cost me like 80 bucks oh wow one of them you know maybe it's not that much anymore maybe it's 50. It, it's stupid either way right there's absolutely sure. no way that anybody's going to buy a box full of those and start you know popping them at people um they're too hard to get First of all, then the price is prohibitive, extremely. So this plate I'm referring to, the 19513, is you know designed to stop all of those threats. So not just 762 by 39 miles steel core, not just M855, but M855A1, which is the new variant, right? Whereas the previous M855 just had a steel core inside the round. 
In this case, it's actually the Christmas tree looking tip of the round that is the steel core. And so its penetrating power is, is significantly greater. Right. And so those rounds, especially like the M80 A1, that's a 308 variant. I mean, that was made to shoot through a cinder block before it hit its target. So these things, you know, have a incredible ability to, to penetrate or defeat, whether it be armor or, you know, any other barrier. Um, but that plate in particular, 19513, is a top performer, minimal back face deformation, which maybe I should describe what that is. Yeah, if you could. You have the ceramic, you've got the polymer. They are binded together. When a round strikes the ceramic, it fragments um, on impact with the ceramic. So you get a little breaking, a little fracturing on the ceramic. And what happens with the backer plate is that it's comprised of numerous layers, right? So what's the mechanism we're using to defeat that? It's the delamination, right? Because that energy has to go somewhere. And so what you end up with is some dimpling on the backside, what we call back face deformation. And, um, you know, that's what's so dangerous about steel plates, that and fragmentation, right? You know, around strikes, if it doesn't go through, well, first you get the fragmentation. And, oh, we, you know, we got truck liner on it to take care of that whoop de doo I'm, I'm unimpressed. Uh, I, I've shot plates like that, and you hit it with the right round, and you'll, you'll pull a chunk of skin off it in the first hit. Um, and, of course, bits of metal are flying 3,000 feet per second in every direction. Now it's not just a hazard to you, it's a hazard to everybody around you. Uh, but not only that, that energy, when it hits the steel plate, you don't get the dimpling on the steel plate, but you do get the energy transmits through to the body. And that can be devastating to the human body, to the human heart in particular. Stop your heart. So with Pick it steel, up right out of your bed thing, just stop your heart cold. Sure. So with steel, the, all that energy gets transferred to the body, but with your plates, mm -hmm. it gets transferred to the plate and then dissipates. Delamination. That's right. Okay. Very good. It's, you know, it's just basic science, right? You know, I mean, you've got to direct that energy somewhere. And, you know, it's like when you hit a, a steel plate, it's like ringing a bell, right? And all that energy is just going straight inside. Sure. Okay. Yep. Well, excellent. That's all the questions I have. Is there anything else you would, um, if if I had, if you had a group of teachers you were talking to, anything else you would want to say to them? Or don't smoke, kids. Don't smoke. That that's good advice. <laughs> yeah. Well, I really appreciate yeah. your time, Mr. Bishop. It's uh, you're it, welcome. It was kind of hard to get um, on the same schedule. I know it, you guys are really busy and doing a lot, and I really appreciate all that you guys are doing. And so, thank you so you're much welcome. for, for Happy your to time. Do it. You're welcome. All right. Well, we will hopefully be talking in the future about getting some of your products. Very good. Have a good one. All right. Thank you, sir. Bye. Bye.